Shower eyes up, please. I want to formally welcome every one of you to this year's Congress in Jesus' name. And I believe that as you are here, you have something in mind that you will not be here in vain. And that the Lord will bring revival, renewal, restoration, spiritual resurrection for every one of us in Jesus' name. And as we begin this uh, year's Congress, we are starting with a question. And we're asking that question from the Lord himself. And I'm going to read the question to you from the Bible. And then give you the chance to voice out that question before the Lord yourself. And that will determine what the Lord will do for you, do within you, and do through you. Not only this time, but throughout this year, and maybe even for the rest of our lives. It's found in Psalm 85. Psalm 85, verse 6. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? It's a question addressed to God. Will you not revive us again so that your people will rejoice in you? Maybe that's the question you have on your mind too. That as you come to this Congress this year, you're asking, Oh Lord, will you not do this for me? A revival, a restoration, a renewal, a spiritual resurrection so that your people will rejoice in you why don't you tell the lord if you have the same question on your mind that the lord will bring a revival a restoration a renewal a resurrection in your own life during this time together here In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for our coming together. We thank you for your love, thank you for your mercy, and thank you for your grace. We thank you for your protecting hand. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your plan. We thank you for your purpose. Thank you for the promises you have made to us, and thank you for the provision that we know you are for us already. Lord, we gather together as a family. And Lord, we are praying that you will do something great, something mighty, in every heart, in every life present here, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our eyes are upon you. Our hearts are depending upon you. We are looking at the promises that you have made for us. We are looking, O oh Lord, at the fact that you are a faithful God. And that you will not fail. And we come bringing our empty cause before you. And we are praying, O oh Lord, you fill us to overflowing in Jesus' name. In our hearts, deep, deep down, we are asking you, O oh Lord, is this not the time? Have you not prepared to bless us? Will you not revive us? Will you not bring a mighty restoration? Will there, be, will there not be a renewal? Will there not be a spiritual resurrection? Even at this time, a regarding of your people to become a mightier me in your sight? Oh Lord, is there any other better time? 
Is it not the time now when you will come in a mighty way and revive your people so that your people will rejoice before you so that all the lukewarmness so that all the spiritual coldness and so that the lethargy and so that spiritual slumber everything will be taken away from us so that the sicknesses and so that the problems diseases everything will be taken away oh lord we're asking will you not come down your mighty power and revive your people we're waiting for you we're looking up to you we're expecting and lord we're praying you will come down in a mighty way you revive us in jesus name that the enemies will not laugh at us again that the people of the world will not say where is their god that there will be no immovable mountain in our midst incredible sickness in our midst and there will be no backsliding anymore in our midst that lord all the fire from the altar that is dying out you will revive it and there will be the flame from the mighty throne of god in our midst once again in jesus name revive your people lord so that the whole church not only the people that are here as we carry back the fire of revival we pray your people will rejoice in jesus name we pray that from tonight you will begin to bless us we want to repair the altar of prayer and we want to stretch our hearts expose everything before you and lord we're praying that fire will come from your throne and consume the sacrifice in jesus name lord we know you will revive us we know you will renew us there will be a mighty spiritual resurrection do it for your people oh lord in jesus name we pray that nobody will be in this place this week and remain the same remain lukewarm or remain cold remain in the same condition in which we came I pray, Lord, from the preacher himself, to all the other preachers, and to all the leaders and the workers, and to all of us who are here, and to all the people who are even coming past for the first time, to our members of the choir, our ushers and security, and all the people that are doing one thing or the other, to help in this uh, Congress, I pray, O oh Lord, the holy fire the holy flame from the very throne of god will fall into every heart in jesus name and lord you will silence the devil you will remove mountains you will do something within us that will give us spiritual power when we go back to our various churches and locations they will not recognize us again do something lord mighty things great things that we will leave this place as fire brands and search all the things that need to be set on fire set them on fire for the lord that thing that should not be in our lives and our churches will be consumed by the fire of the lord glorify yourself O lord in this meeting thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray amen we return to that question in um, psalm 85 reading from verse 6 it says wilt thou not revive us again here was an israelite he had seen the good old days he had seen the miracle power of the lord he had seen when the power of god descended and the people shouted in the mighty praise of the lord and now he was living in the generation of the children of israel when it appeared things were cold and things were lukewarm and it appeared something was not moving right and then he went prostrating before the lord he said lord look at your people look at our condition will you not revive us again he was standing as a representative of the people of god in using the word us he was saying will you not revive us the leaders in the nation 
because he knew that if the fire will fall upon the leadership in the nation that fire will go into the real into the congregations and into the whole nation he was speaking perhaps even for the levites the levites that were now in the motion of a service in the motion of all the things they were doing the mechanical things were there but the fire was not there the mechanical things were there but the spiritual life was not there and speaking for those levites he said oh lord will you not revive us again he was also speaking for the congregation of the people of god they had no testimony anymore and their worship was dry and everything was cold and as he looked at himself as a representative of the people of god the congregation he said oh lord what have we done are we going to continue like this wilt thou not revive us again and then he said that thy people the people you have redeemed the people you have purchased the people that are called by your name that thy people the people that the outside world are referring to as the people of god and they're reminding us of the history our roots and our history how we came out of the land of egypt how the lord did mighty and great things that these your people the people of this generation who are hearing of the story of the mighty revival at the time of moses at the time of our great grandfathers in the way of the lord but what they heard in history they are not experiencing today the joy and the testimony that they heard in history they are not having it today he said if you will do it for us what you did for our forefathers if you will do it for us what you did for the prophets of old then thy people will rejoice in thee it was a question and eventually the answer came in uh, ezekiel chapter 37 in this ezekiel chapter 37 the lord showed ezekiel the condition of the children of israel and he asked ezekiel he said son of man referring to that watchman referring to ezekiel referring to the man that he has put in their midst to reveal to them the mind of the almighty he said can these bones live can they come up again can there be a resurrection can there be a regathering? Can there be a restoration to the old time glory that has been lost? Can there be a renewal? Can there be a revival, son of man? Can these bones live? And he couldn't answer. And he didn't want to say, no, they cannot live. He didn't want to say the condition is so deplorable, nothing can be done. And yet he didn't want to be too optimistic about it. And so he said, O oh Lord, can I tell? Thou knowest. And then the Lord told him, he began to tell him what to do. And as he began to do those things, then something began to happen. I believe that the Lord will tell you what to do here. And as you begin to do those things, immediately before you leave, I believe on from tonight, something will begin to happen. It will happen in your soul. It will happen in your body. It will happen in your life. All these things that, uh, you know, have brought a coldness, lukewarmness into our lives. Do you know that everything will be burnt away by the fire of the Lord? And so, as he did what uh, the Lord wanted him to do, then the revival began immediately. And eventually, before the end of the whole thing, there was a great, mighty army. And I believe that that's exactly what the Lord is going to do. But the question is, do we need revival? I said, do we need revival? As individuals, we need revival. And as a church itself, we need revival. What are the things that show that you and I, as individuals, that we need revival? Number one, when a Christian sees his heart becoming lukewarm, becoming cold, and he sees that he's not as desirous, interested, zealous in the things of the Lord as he used to be, he needs a revival. Number two, when his joy begins to be turned into depression, under the pressures of the time then that christian knows that he needs revival when the joy of the lord is no more strength 
when it appears depression is taking over when it appears there is even oppression now in his life he needs a mighty revival from the lord number three when his love begins to decrease in the face of disappointments in life he needs revival number four when his prayer life becomes choked by the activities of a busy life that individual christian needs a revival and number five when a service for the lord is losing excitement it just goes now to the service and it goes on in the motions of that service there is no more excitement in the service of the lord it's become so used to it it becomes monotonous that individual christian needs revival number six when it's desire for the word of the lord for the strong meat of the word is disappearing and he's uh, just having quiet time now just to have the quiet time but uh, the, the thing he used to discover in the word of god the depth of revelation in the word of god is no more there he needs revival when his face number seven in god is giving way to the fear of man and he doesn't hold on to the promises of God anymore because of the problems that are greater in his mind than the promises of the Lord. He needs revival. Number eight, when his heart is becoming gradually hardened and it's no more tender is no more compassionate is no more forgiving and he doesn't relate with god and with other people the way he used to be that christian as individual he has a reason to cry unto the lord for a mighty revival for an heaven sent revival for a true revival number nine when the christian notices there is greater interest in the things of the world in the affairs of the world in the riches of the world more than in the things that concern heaven and holiness he needs a revival number 10 when his conversation is more with men than with god and he finds it talking to men about his problem about his needs about his desires and he finds it almost impossible very very hard and difficult to talk about those things unto god he needs a revival 11 when there is a greater desire to please men than to please god and then he leans toward men more than he leans upon god he needs a revival number 12 when he he finds out that he delights in the people of the world more than in the people of god when he finds that he has fellowship with the people of the world and he only tolerates the people of god that individual christian needs a revival and as you look at all these things we're seeing and you begin to ask yourself do i need revival as i consider my relationship with god i consider my relationship with my fellow brothers and sisters i consider my thirst for the word of god i consider the things that i used to love and had deep burning desire for them and i see my condition spiritually now then i should be asking myself don't these indices evidences marks in my life do they not show that really i need revival now we have talked about the individual when we look at the church and you think about the church and you are asking is the church all right the way it is or does the church need revival restoration spiritual resurrection well when the spiritual life of the church and the love and the care of the things of god and when holiness and zeal in the church is going down not increasing not improving when obedience to the word of god faithfulness to the word of god is far below the obedience and the faithfulness of the early church it means we need a revival why should the church be satisfied with a lower stage a lower level a lower spirituality than that of the early church and when we find there is lack of commitment and when the leadership is complaining our workers are not committed our members are not committed the people are not the way they used to be then it shows that we need revival and when we see little or no conversions in the church when we go from january to 
to December and we're just having our services we baptize nobody in water and there is no evidence that people are being born again into the kingdom of God then we need revival in the church when the church members are in pursuit of material things physical things more than spiritual things we need revival and we need it urgently and the Lord will give it to us in Jesus name Otherwise, if we don't have revival, we're likely to die off in the wilderness before we enter the promised land. But we're going to enter that promised land. And if we're going to enter, this is a time when you and I as individuals, we need revival. And when the church as a whole, we need revival. Very quickly, there are three points we're going to consider. Number one, the price for true revival. The topic is for those who don't have the program yet preparation for true revival preparation for true revival and uh, point one the price for true revival if there is going to be a true revival there is going to be a price to pay and then number two proclamation that brings restoration the proclamation that brings restoration and then number three the power of resurrection the power of resurrection number one the price for true revival let's look at ezekiel now chapter 37 and i read from verse one the hand of the lord was upon me and he carried me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered O lord god thou knowest and the lord knows he knew at that time and he still knows today if there's going to be revival god will be searching for something looking for something and he told ezekiel in another place that he sought for a man because there is a man or a woman that will have to pay the price so that the revival that we're expecting will actually come you'll find something a passage i read to you about ezekiel he said the hand of the lord was upon me god has to do something in you before he does something through you he must do something for you before he can do something through you he touches the individual he raises up a man he fires up a man he pumps zeal power energy spiritual energy that is into a man and then he sends him out to go and reach others and as ezekiel saw the dry bones and he was wondering the deplorable condition of those dry bones picturing the children of israel the question was can these bones live and he said oh god you know whether they can live or they will not live and god knew that they could live but god has planned something he will not do anything in this life without somebody turning something somewhere praying somewhere preaching somewhere ministering somewhere he needs a man a man that will pay the price and i pray that you will be that man and you will be that woman you see at the time of moses there was a moses to be chosen to go to the children of israel and deliver them the lord could have done it without moses but he needs a man always he needs a man it was a time he needed an elijah another time he needed a nehemiah another time he needed an ezra another time he needed a peter he needed a paul and that is what you find in church history you know the history you know the story of uh, martin luther he needed a man to bring back the reformation restoration and to bring back the message of the just living by faith and then another time he needed john wesley all those people now they have come and they have gone on. this is your own time will you fail God will you disappoint God no he needs you and I believe that you'll make yourself available and the Lord will use you like he used all those people 
but you will have a price to pay as every one of the people that have gone before us they had a price to pay in psalm 141 psalm 141 in verse 7 here we're looking at the condition of the children of israel this is a spiritual condition the description of their spiritual condition psalm 141 verse 7 our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth as when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth but mine eyes are unto thee O god the lord in thee is my trust leave not my soul destitute you see in verse 7 he describes the condition he says our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth let's in the hands of the people of the world we're already in the grave's mouth they are ready to bury us and they feel that there is no there there is no reason to keep us because we are dead and the bones are dried and the bones are separated and the bones are scattered and there was no hope at all but then when you can pray and when you can talk to the lord he says but mine eyes in verse 8 are upon thee he says O lord O God, the Lord, in thee is my trust, lead not my soul destitute. In Second Chronicles chapter 15, Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God. Can you imagine that? The people of God, those they redeemed, those they saved, and he brought them out of the land of Egypt, and he settled them in the land of Canaan. For a long time, Israel had been without the true God, without a teaching priest, and without the law. Yes, the law was there. Uh, reaching on the tables of stone but it wasn't in their heart it wasn't in their midst it wasn't in their community and they were living as if there were no law that was a condition and in fact uh, some of them were like uh, in uh, between two opinions thinking uh, are we still going to uh, get back to the lord or does it mean that hope is forever completely lost uh, through uh, for us but you see, if you are going to be the person that God will bring into this picture and God will use you, you need to be a man that will uh, bridge the gap in Jesus' name. But if the Lord is going to do it, what kind of man will you be? And what kind of man will I be? What price will you have to pay? And what price will I have to pay? So that the Lord will do such a thing in the midst of his people today. Those that will be used by God. In such a mighty revival, there will be number one, those who have repented and sought the Lord for genuine salvation. Well, that's very clear. Because he cannot use the dead to raise the dead. You must come alive spiritually. If you are going to be able to minister to the people who are dead spiritually, the blind cannot lead the blind. If you are still a slave to sin, if you are still unsaved, unredeemed yourself, how can you help in redeeming the people that are lost? How can you help in saving the people that have not known the Lord as their Savior? So then, number one, you must have repented and you must have sought the Lord and received genuine salvation. Number two, he will use the people that hate sin and do not love the world with all its sinful attractions and pleasures the people that god will send to the world to go and draw those worldly people away from the hands of the devil from the god of this world and bring them into the kingdom they will be the people that hate sin and they do not love the world neither do they love any of the pleasures of the world number three there'll be people that have conscience void of offense toward god and toward man check up all those people that were used in bible days ezekiel jeremiah isaiah and all the rest you will find that they were people they were not carrying some dead weight of guilt and condemnation in them they were not confessing sin personally before they will be able to minister all that had been settled and they had conscience void of offense toward god and toward men number three they, number four they were people that were holy and pure pure in heart 
pure in language, pure in their lifestyle. Number five, they were people that were filled with the Spirit. And if you look at Ezekiel and you look at it from chapter one and through to the end, you will see very, very many times how he will say, The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out, he carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, do you think that the Lord will leave all the other people that are filled with the Holy Ghost and then concentrate on you that you are the one to bring revival? How can you bring revival? I mean, heaven sent revival. I mean, the revival that will set the people of God on fire. If the Holy Ghost has not set you on fire yourself, if you have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost, I challenge you during this Congress, you must be filled with the Holy Ghost and you will be filled in jesus name and then number six there are the people that maintain a close fellowship relationship with the lord they are not talkatives if you find if you look at ezekiel you will find that a lot of times he was dumb he will not be able to say anything and then when the fire began to burn within when the message came from above and when the vision became very clear then the lord will loosen the tongue and then open his mouth and then he will begin to speak if you find out in the bible the people that have been used of god check off from your own bible and you will find out they were not people that were talking 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 too much that was the problem with something he had the power of god and the lord could not use him as much as he would have wanted to use him because he was a leaking vessel because he spoke and spoke and he spoke so much the power of god had leaked away from his life number seven they are the people that receive instruction daily from the lord and from the word of the lord they do not rely simply only merely on flesh and blood for all that they want to know and for all that they know number eight they are the people that are fearless and bold for the truth they have conviction the people that can challenge pharaoh let my people go there are people that can come before ahab and say according to my word there will be no rain nor dew these years according to my word there are people that can reply in uh, ahab when ahab says elijah you are the one troubling israel and they will point at him and say i'm not the one troubling israel you are the one troubling israel they are the people that are bold for the truth and they are fearless uh, for righteousness number nine they are the people calling sinners to repentance at every opportunity uh, whether you are preaching from the pulpit or you are preaching in the bus or you are talking to individuals you are always calling sinners to repentance and then number ten they are the people that want their congregations of imminent judgment for the disobedient and rebellious yet holding forth god's promises of mercy and grace to the penitent and uh, there are people that are eager to please the Lord rather than to please men. Whether they are in the pulpit or they are in their prayer closet, their desire all the time is to please the Lord. If the Lord will see such an attitude in you, such qualification in you as well as in me, I believe that he will use us in this generation. He will use us in Jesus' name. Uh, we find in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter uh, 22, Ezekiel chapter 22, and in verse 30, and I sought for a man among them, and I sought for a woman among them. He needs men, he needs women, and he's seeking for people. And I've told you all the price that we need to pay, that we lay everything upon the altar, we become so consecrated and committed to the Lord, and we say, Lord, I've heard your voice, I've seen that the church needs revival today, you are going to have somebody you are going to use, and I know you are seeking for a man, you are seeking for a woman, I surrender myself i give up myself i want to be used for this generation and i sought for a man among them that should make up the edge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none at that time he found none will he find somebody today will he find somebody today he can save this nation he can save your nation he can save the continent of africa and even beyond beyond africa he will save multitudes in jesus name now we go to point number two the proclamation 
that brings restoration. You see, if we're going to be used of God to bring restoration and to bring revival, there is a kind of proclamation that brings revival, that brings restoration, that brings this kind of spiritual resurrection. Let's come back to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, reading from verse 8, from verse 4, again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord isn't that very significant they were dead bones they were dry bones they were scattered bones naturally they didn't have ears to hear and yet the prophecy or the commandment the commission was that he will speak to the dead dry separated bones and they will tell them hear the word of the lord there are times you can use the scriptures against yourself there are times you may know some scriptures and you will use those scriptures and say look at what the scripture says that the sinners are dead in sins and trespasses and then you use human logic you say dead man cannot hear and so if those people are dead how can i speak to them well that's human logic but here we're told of these dead and dry bones that they should hear the word of the lord you know the bible says the sinners are deaf and if the sinners are deaf then they cannot really hear and there are times you can use that scripture against yourself and you will not look at other scriptures in the bible and you will say what's the point preaching to them number one they are dead number two they are deaf and then the bible says they are even blind they cannot feel they cannot see what's the point preaching to them you see the point i'm making although they are dead and dry bones it still says hear the word of the lord proclaim the word you may be preaching to a uh, people that are already backsliding the people that are hardened sinners the people that you feel they will never hear and the people you feel they don't even have any conscience at all but their conditions will never be worse than the conditions here and therefore you just stand up and do what the lord has told you to do and tell those dead dry bones hear the word of the lord therefore we know number one thing that we're going to do if we're going to bring this revival this renewal this restoration is that there will be the preaching of the word but then i want you to look at verse 9 then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus says the lord come forth from the four winds so breath breathe upon these lane that they may live he was not asking ezekiel to pray and talk to the spirit of god symbolized by the wind here that the wind that is the spirit of god the breath of god the life of god will come into these dead bones so that they will live you see then there is a second a kind of responsibility if you are going to bring revival they will be praying those are the two hands that bring revival from the throne of God in heaven to the congregation that are dead here on earth. The one hand of preaching and the other hand of praying. Preaching alone without praying will not do it because the preaching alone can give instruction to the head, will not warm the heart will not transform their heart will not bring the fire from the altar of god into the altar of their heart and praying alone will not do it without preaching because faith cometh by hearing hearing by the word of god therefore if there is going to be at the revival we're expecting on the one hand there is a preaching of the word of god and the dead bones and the dry bones will hear the word of the lord on the other hand there is going to be praying intercession pleading for the people before the throne of God so that they will be able uh, to really uh, come unto the Lord in Mark chapter 16 Mark 
chapter 16, reading from verse 15. It says, He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see that? If you are going to bring the life of God into the people uh, that you are meeting on the mission field, you are going to preach the word. You cannot say, well, all I'm going to do, the ministry God has given to me is to pray and to pray and to pray. Praying is good. Praying is wonderful. And you know they prayed on the day of Pentecost. But the prayer alone did not bring uh, the sinners to the Lord. But the time came when Peter rose up. And then he began to declare the word of God. Prayer alone will not save the world. There are people that tell us now that the world has had enough preaching. And that uh, there are many people that are preaching and preaching. That all that is enough. Uh, we don't need uh, much preaching now. If you are going to bring revival let everybody begin to pray but you know what God told Ezekiel he said speak and prophesy unto these bones and tell them hear ye the word of the Lord in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 Acts of the Apostles reading from chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 Acts 5, 19, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand, speak in the temple. All the, to all the people, all the words of this life. Here the angel came. If the angel uh, knew anything at all, he knew that the preaching of the word of God will be necessary to bring life unto those people that didn't know the Lord. And yet, this preaching is not enough. There are people that preach and preach and preach, and there is no time left for prayer at all. And there are many of us that may come to this congress, and uh, when you heard I announced the topic that we're having preparation for true revival, you say, praise the Lord. That's exactly what I need. I need revival in my life. I need revival in my soul. I need revival in my family. And then you make up your mind, I'm going to listen to the word of God. I will not allow a single sentence, a single word to fall to the ground. I'm going to take in everything, soak in everything, and allow the word of God to sink into me. That's right. That's very good. But then, if you hear the word of God, and you jot down everything, and then there is no prayer. You just say, well, I know that if I'm going to be revived, I need the preaching of the word. I will hear the word. I will concentrate on the word. You know, revival will not come in that way. It's not only the hand of preaching, but with the hand of prayer that will be able to bring revival. That's what the Lord told Ezekiel after he had uh, prophesied and spoken and proclaimed uh, to the dry bones. Now he was told, call upon the Spirit that the spirit of the living God, the spirit of life, will come into these uh, dead bones. And if we're going to have revival during this week, we really have to pray. And I believe we're going to pray. We will make up our mind. You hear the word of God on the one hand, you pray on the other hand. Look at the early church in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, reading from verse 24. It says, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. They lifted up their voice to God with one accord. And they said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is. And then they went on and they just prayed. Verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. I wish we could pray like that. I hope we're going to pray like that. I pray we will pray like that. Because it says, when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They had been filled in Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. But now we have a new challenge. We have new threatening. We have new conflict. We have new problem. And the people were trying to restrain them and hinder them. And they knew that although we were filled with the Holy Ghost before, we have been serving the Lord. Don't you know, as you have been filled with the Holy Ghost, and you have been preaching, and you have been doing this and doing that, uh, they, you are getting tired. And because of that, you come back now, because of the new challenges, because of the new threatenings, because of all the things that the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the scribes and the Sanhedrin, because of the things they are 
sin you now come to the lord and you pray again and you are filled with the holy ghost again and then they spoke the word of god with what with boldness i believe the lord will do it i believe the lord will do it and if the Lord will do that, He's going to do that in our midst, then we have to be people that are completely surrendered, submitted, yielded unto the Spirit of the Lord. And I've told you there are two things we are going to do. If you are going to really bring revival, you are going to hear the Word of God and you are going to pray. Number three now, the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. Ezekiel again, chapter 37. In Ezekiel chapter 37, reading now from verse 10, it says, So I prophesied as it was commanded me. So I prophesied as it was commanded me. It might have looked unreasonable to people watching Ezekiel, talking to those dry bones, dead bones, those bones that were scattered those bones that didn't have any sign of a, a possibility of coming together again but the lord told him to prophesy don't look at the faces of the people don't worry what you have heard about the people just say what the lord has told you to say and say it how the lord told you to say it god will raise the dead he will restore backsliders he will heal the sick it will sanctify believers it will bring fire upon cold hearts if you will do just what the lord has told you to do so i prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and they stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army the lord is going to do that for us that he himself will bring that kind of revival that kind of fire and i believe that it will even begin to happen this night because the word of god has confirmed that with god nothing shall be impossible you look at your life now where you are then you look up and as you look at some of the things we have said today you look ahead where you ought to be what you ought to be and how you ought to be and the things you ought to be doing and you see there is a great distance a great difference between what you are now and what you ought to be and you are asking yourself within this one week that we are together can god bring a new kind of regeneration i don't mean that you are not born again you are born again but there's a new kind of regeneration by the spirit of god that he wants to work out in your life and in my life and he wants to bring a new kind of restoration i don't mean you are backsliding i know you are children of god but then you look at the place you ought to be and the lord has been waiting for you and he says you have been a christian now for 10 years you have been a christian now for 15 years you have been a christian even a minister now passed for 20 years and he says i've been waiting for a long time see the level where you are see the height i wanted to take you and then what has not been done in five years in 10 years in 20 years within one week can the lord do it i said can the lord do it if you will allow him there is nothing impossible with god the one who can raise the dead he can restore you into everything that you ought to be and then there will be a revival of righteousness a revival of the fire the zeal of the holy ghost a revival of real true divine service in the church of the lord now you see for the children of israel they were already scattered and for them they needed a regathering and that needed a kind of spiritual resurrection that the lord was going to do for them and the lord was assuring them that he will do it and i believe that for every individual the lord will bring a revival and for us as the whole church in this nation nigeria the lord will bring revival and for each of the countries that were present here ghana or zambia or south africa or cameroon or whatever country it is as a church for you in the nation the lord will bring a mighty revival in jesus name and it can kindle and rekindle that fire even now 
if we will come with our empty heart with a real strong desire and we say i don't need any other thing i want the holy ghost to fall upon me even tonight and i want the holy ghost to turn everything around and it will touch you it will touch me it will touch our sisters it will touch our brothers it will touch everyone tonight a great army is now being formed for the lord and we'll leave this place with the fire of the lord will revival in our soul and nothing will be able to stand before us during this week i'm appealing to you that we come just to hide ourselves now with the lord and let the lord do something during this week so that at the end of this week he will call you and he will call me he will say now get up go and show yourself to ahab and you will go you will meet obadiah in the way you will say tell your master i have come and then he will say how can i go and tell him say go and call him and you are going to meet ahab the people that are opposing the gospel the people that are bringing idolatry to your community you will meet them you will challenge them and the fire of the lord will fall upon the altar and the rain the revival the blessing that has not fallen for many many years for three and a half years through you the lord is going to bring everything down why don't you rise up and tell the lord oh lord you will use me oh lord you will use me the lord is going to bring that revival through you the lord is going to bring that revival through you he will do it within this week just open up your heart to the lord and say lord i need revival lord i need revival and you know how the revival will come you hear the word of the lord you give yourself fully to the word of the lord that you are hearing and then there will be praying because without the prayer the preaching of the word alone will not do it let's call upon the lord let him start tonight let him start tonight make an elijah out of you make an elisha out of you make an ezekiel out of you make an isaiah out of you a peter a paul out of you he can do it and sisters let him raise up a deborah through you he can do it he can do it he can raise up a priscilla in you and esther in you and you can then go back to your nation and go back to your community and take the fire of revival that will take away from here and take it to the people let him start with you let him start with me let him start with us don't have any negative thought about yourself can these bones live oh yes they can live god knows they can live don't belittle what god will do through you don't minimize what god wants to do through you and don't think the revival cannot come so soon it can it will it must we need that revival by the end of this week you must have greater spiritual power than when you came here you must become an agent of spiritual resurrection revival renewal you have only one life to live let god make you a threshing instrument an agent a carrier of his revival fire
lieblos Ton und Ton. Let him do a spiritual work in you. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in thee? He will. He will. Make up your mind. You will hear the word of the Lord. And you will pray unto the Lord. Present yourself before the Lord and let him do everything that needs to be done. During this week. During this week. You need to come to a new level. A new height. A new stage. A new phase of your Christian life. A new phase of your spiritual ministry. A new phase of the things that the Lord has called you to this week this week this is the time this is the time don't allow any distraction during this week don't allow any distraction during this week Nobody knows your need as much as you and as much as God. Don't allow side talk to take you away from the real thing that you need to get in this week. There will be revival.